right. Well, welcome everybody to uh, the new school year. And again, thanks for your patience tonight. My name is Amy Strain and I'm pleased to be your host this evening. I'm actually very pleased to be your host because I almost wasn't a minute ago. So it's good to be here. <laughs> uh, we have a great program for you tonight full of detailed information about what school will look like this fall. But before we begin, I want to quickly explain tonight's webinar format. All of the attendees have been put into a listen-only mode to minimize the background noise. You will be able to ask questions using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. About midway through the webinar, we have a fun interactive exercise for all of you. You will need to toggle over to another website and enter a code to participate. We will give you more information later, but I'm going to send you the link through the chat function so you have it handy. This presentation should be about 40 to 45 minutes long, and then we will have about a 15 minute question and answer period. Again, you can ask questions by typing them into the Q&A box. We will post tonight's recorded presentation to our website following the webinar. After welcomes from President Barry Thornton and Principal Charlie McGraw, Assistant Principal Rita Lee will explain the schedule and our approach to the academic program. Assistant Principal Mary Beth Ortiz will then talk to us about student life and the creative plans her team has put in place to build community and create enhancing and enriching opportunities for our students. Dean of Students Ray Baldonado will talk about student behavior expectations and Chief Advancement Officer Mike Fidelli will discuss parent involvement and philanthropy. Dr. Thornton and Mr. McGraw will close and then we will take your questions. I would like to now turn it over to President Barry Thornton. Dr. Thornton, you are muted. Right. It's Thank not you. a Zoom unless you start on mute. <laughs> so welcome again. Welcome for the second time. Uh, very excited to, um, uh, to be here tonight and to be able to talk about uh, Sarah High School and where we're moving going forward. We couldn't be more excited to welcome the class of 2026. Our community really has been very busy planning uh, for the year throughout really the summer, meeting on a, on a regular basis. Uh, and importantly, to share some basic information, but to share really how we're moving forward as a school. Now, every member, member of my team, whether or not it's an administrator, coach, teacher has really been focusing on making sure that this is an exceptional learning experience for your sons. Um, importantly, importantly, that it's an exceptional learning uh, experience that really focuses on a culture, the culture of a padre, of what it means to be a young man of respect, of integrity, of inclusion and compassion. These are at the core of who we are. And Sarah has learned so much over the last couple of years. And it's important to note that we didn't just survive. Quite honestly, we thrive. We really move forward. We've grown, we've adapted. And I think you're coming into a school where you'll be able to reap the rewards of the learning and growth and advantage and advancement. And also you're gonna be contributing to it by who you are, by what you bring to the community. So we're really excited. The growth includes building renovations. We'll talk about program enhancements uh, that Ms. Lee and, and uh, Ms. Ortiz will, will speak about as well as Mr. McGraw. We always begin in prayer. Um, and this is a wonderful prayer that the Sarah School prayer that we recite on almost every occasion that our students uh, developed almost 60 years ago. So I ask you to join along with me as we say in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, amen, Sarah School prayer. Lord God, from you comes all that is good, all our talents and ability. Help us develop these gifts, even when it means hard work. Help us face the reality of working together as a community and when necessary, help us deal with pain and disappointment. Be with us in our endeavors. In the spirit of Nippur Sarah, let us never give up and let this dedication in our lives today help us grow in faith, maturity, and life for tomorrow. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Father, and Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Well, I mentioned that we've been moving forward and anybody who has come to the campus uh, recently has not seen this. <laughs> what you have seen is a, a school site that's under renovation. Uh, the whole front of the school is cordoned off, massive machinery. Last week we had 60 uh, workers on site and we're deep into a $17.5 million, $17 million renovation of the academic wing to develop the Stinson Center for Learning and innovation. This is actually the East face, what it will look like when it's completed. 
It's named after Ken Stinson, class of 1960, who along with his wife donated 7.5 million to the effort. And the Center for Learning Innovation will provide learning space and house design thinking center, and provide a contemporary learning space for our students. Now, the project uh, really encompasses a number of different components, a learning commons, a, a design innovation center, classrooms, design thinking room, student conferences, bathrooms and offices, so a variety of things, but as well, significant infrastructure, uh, new roof, elevator, seismic retrofit, HVAC, that include modern safety fe features such as MERV 13 filters for air quality issues, whether or not it's from fires or airborne pathogens or the locusts that we expect soon. But more importantly, all of this will provide a contemporary learning experience uh, that Ms. Lee will talk about in a bit. And you can see on the left, some of the infrastructure improvements, some of the seismic safety and some of the expansive areas that are being renovated as we move forward. When completed, it will be a completely different center. It will be both beautiful, but it will also be functional, supporting student academic programs, student collaboration, connection to the broader educational community, not just in Sarah San Mateo, but really across the world. And you'll learn about that as the year go on. We will be occupying the building in stages um, and full completion of this really should be in March, 2023. So you young men, your sons uh, will be able to enjoy that this year at various times and particularly uh, March, April, May, June as we are fully invested in the facility. So we're excited about this. We're excited to move forward and we're excited about some of the things that we have this year. Stay tuned. You're gonna be hearing a lot about this as we go forward. At this time, I would like to introduce our principal, Mr. Charlie McGraw. Thank you, Dr. Thornton. Hello, everyone. And once again, welcome to Sarah High School. As principal, I have the honor to be working with an exceptional group of individuals who over the next four years will work tirelessly to educate your son. Freshman year sets the foundation for high school. Freshman year sets the foundation for your son with a focus on his real and lived experiences, his relationships with others and the relevance of those relationships that are ingrained in our school mission and our graduation learning outcomes. Freshman year is the year when the real work begins. The Sarah parent partner relationship begins right now. From day one, your son will be paired with classmates, teammates, group leaders, peers and mentors who will walk with your son and your family every step of the way. As Padres of the class of 2026, it will be filled with many firsts. It will be the first time they will walk the hallways as Padres, just like the 11,000 plus Padres who have graduated from Sarah High School. They will be the first to experience what teaching and learning looks like for the global good as a renovation project modernizes our facilities to support your son's particular learning style. Each and every member of the school community, teachers, counselors, campus ministers, program directors, coaches, and administration are excited to have you as freshman families. Each is an expert in the particular field who is partnering with you in providing every opportunity to be successful in this important first year. The various offices that support your son's health and well being are student life, counseling, academic resources, campus ministry, athletics club and activities and the Dean of Students have a particular interest in your success and well-being as freshmen, students and freshman families. This year, Sarah is pleased to announce that we have hired a new position called the Wellness Counselor and Mission and Brotherhood Coordinator. In this new position, Mr. Nicholas Parazaro, class of 2000, will support mental health and wellness of students and support school programming that helps create a culture reflective of the Padre Brotherhood with the values of respect, integrity, inclusion, and compassion. This will be done in a safe, confidential, and non-judgmental and supportive environment. Mr. Parzaro will serve as a liaison between students, their families, school staff, and the community. In addition, he will work directly with students who experience difficulties in educational achievement due to social emotional adjustment and or attendance issues and strive to ensure equity and access for all students. Over the course of his school career, we want your son to become his own advocate and to work with his teachers, his counselors and others at school to make sure he has everything he needs to be both successful and happy. Sarah High School is part of the Archdiocese of San Francisco, Department of Catholic Schools who support Sarah High School. 
When dealing with school operations, we are guided by the Department of Catholic Schools in collaboration with both San Mateo County Department of Education, the San Mateo uh, Department of Health, who issue health and safety guidelines. The two most recent examples of this collaboration are the Big Five for School Safety and the COVID-19 Framework for Safe Schools. This new framework reflects the guidance and mandates of those agencies, as well as the California Department of Health and the Center for Disease Control. Sarah will be a place and is a place of endless opportunities for your son. Your son's success is foundational to our mission as a school. We will walk alongside your son and partner with you as families throughout these next four years. I now want to introduce you to two key administrators. Ms. Mary Beth Ortiz is the assistant principal for student life. And Ms. Rita Lee is making her official debut tonight as the new assistant principal for academics. Ms. Lee, Ms. Ortiz leads four different departments that impact your son's physical and emotional learning. Those departments are athletics, campus ministry, club and activities, and the Dean of Students. She will be speaking with you a little later. Ms. Lee is responsible for the academic profile of our school, overseeing the guidance and counseling departments, the Academic Resource Center, seven different academic departments, as well as leading the design-led innovation program. Ms. Lee will share with you some of the academic success at, at Sarah High School. I now want to introduce officially our new assistant principal for academics, Ms. Rita Lee. Ms. Lee. Thank you, Mr. McGraw. My name is Rita Lee and I am the assistant principal for academics. My primary role is to work with Mr. McGraw, our teachers and department chairs on curriculum and professional development. I would like to also introduce you to the rest of our academic team. Mr. Mark Fulton Peoples is our Dean of Studies. He will be speaking in a little bit. His primary responsibilities include grades and student schedules. Our counseling staff includes Mrs. Jane Zuha, who is the Director of Counseling, Mr. Brian Imajuru and Mrs. Karen Gadosi, who are Upper Division Counselors, Mr. Danny Arias and Mr. Chris Quirey are our Lower Division Counselors. Mrs. Gail Rosenberg is the Director of the Academic Resource Center and she leads the team in the ARC. As Mr. McGraw said earlier, we are also very excited to welcome our new wellness counselor, Mr. Nicholas Perizzaro. He has been working as a wellness counselor for the past 11 years, and he will be bringing a wealth of knowledge and experience to the school. He will be leading the wellness programs at Sarah, as well as meeting with students. As Mr. McGraw also mentioned earlier, we will be conducting full in-person learning with all students and teachers on campus starting on the first day of school, August 22nd. Attendance on campus is required for all students. Parents may need to adjust travel schedules with this in mind so that students don't miss school due to travel. This will be especially important during finals week in December and in May since there are no makeups for missed final exams. We continue to monitor communications from the county health department. If we are required to move to distance learning for either health or weather conditions, this will be implemented throughout the entire school. Students who are absent for any reason will learn asynchronously, accessing resources through Google Classroom and PCR. In the event of an extended absence, our counselors will support students through their absence, assisting with student-teacher communications. So what are our academic expectations for students? First off, students need to bring their electronic devices to school fully charged. They should also bring headphones in case they need it for a specific class. All of our teachers use Google Classroom, which makes it easy for students to find their assignments. We also recommend that students stay current in their work, that they complete their homework the day it's assigned rather than waiting for the day before it's due. Many teachers will assign preparatory work for students to complete before class. And then about every two weeks, we have office hours. Office hours is a dedicated time in the schedule where both students and teachers are available to meet. Students should use that time to meet with their teacher, their counselor, or the ARC staff if they have any questions or need additional support. At Sarah, we also have a block schedule with A days and B days. On A days, classes one, two, three, and four will meet. On B days, classes five, six, seven will meet. Usually once a week, homeroom will also meet on a B day. The school day begins at 8.15 and ends at 2.30. A-day schedules will always be the same. We have several B-day schedules within the 8.15 to 2.30 timeframe. I've shown you the most common B-day schedule, which has a mid-morning activity. Our classes are 75 minutes in length, 
we have 10 minute passing periods between classes. Students also have 40 minutes for lunch. For lower division, which is the freshmen and sophomores, they will have lunch after third period on A days and after sixth period on B days. Um, also again, homerooms meet once a week. Just to give you an idea of what our AB block schedule looks like, this is the first two weeks of school. So for the first week of school, um, the first week of school begins on a B day. So there will be three B days and two A days that week. The second week of school begins on an A day. So there'll be three A days and two B, two B days that week. And again, there are different variations of B days depending on the needs of the school. There are two resources we have posted on the Sarah website that will help you guide through the schedules. They are both downloadable and can be found on the Sarah website by searching for calendar. One is the PDF of the fall semester AB block schedule, and the other one is the PDF of the Bell schedules. I highly recommend that you take a look at these and download them. I would now like to introduce our new Dean of Studies, Mr. Mark Fulton Peebles. Mark has been a science teacher at Sarah for the last eight years. He has also been the science department chair. We are excited to have him join the academic team. Thank you, Ms. Lee. My name is Mark Fulton Peebles and I'm the Dean of Studies. We have a wide range of support for students. As Ms. Lee mentioned earlier, office hours are built into the B-Day schedules roughly once every two weeks. Counselors also schedule check-ins with their students. They conduct both individual and small group meetings and conduct college planning meetings with upper division students. Students in the Academic Resource Center are also scheduled into ARC Study Hall, where they will meet with the ARC staff either individually or in small groups. For students who need technical support, Mr. Morris is available both by email and in person. You have heard the Sarah that Sarah works in partnership with parents. We believe strongly in the Sarah Parent Partnership. Our goals are the same. We want students to experience academic, personal, and spiritual growth. And in order for this to happen, we need to work together. Parents and guardians can support student growth by helping your son work through his challenges. When he struggles, help him contact his teacher maybe even help him write the email. We encourage him to take responsibility, even when it means admitting he did something wrong. Remember, we are a college preparatory school. At the end of the four years, we want him to be prepared for college and the world beyond. What should parents do that Sarah cannot do? First of all, Make sure that you contact the attendance office if there is any reason your son is not in class. Don't wait for the attendance office to call you if your son is reported absent by the teacher. Please make sure that your son is up and ready for school on time. As your son enters high school, our expectations will be different from middle school. He may have needed your help more in the past. Resist this temptation. You won't be able to help him when he leaves Sarah and goes to college. And please remember that this is his experience, not yours. If your son is experiencing challenges, encourage him to contact his teacher or counselor. As Dr. Thornton mentioned, we are under construction this year. The library and a few classrooms around the library will be closed for part of the school year. The Stinson Center for Learning and Innovation will be open sometime during the spring semester. We are looking forward to the new classrooms and the new spaces for students to learn and study. In particular, we are looking forward to the new design and thinking classroom. This will give de dedicated space to the design-led innovation program, which focuses on creativity, innovation, and service. <clears throat> the program also hosts a Sarah Global Speaker Series where students and families get to hear and talk to fascinating speakers from around the world. Thank you for listening. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our assistant principal of student life, Miss Mary Beth Ortiz. Good evening, my name is Mary Beth Ortiz and I'm the assistant principal of student life here at Sarah. I'm delighted to welcome you as the newest members of our Sarah community. I grew up in the Bay Area, I attended Our Lady of Angels, and then I went on to St. Ignatius. 
please don't tell your boys. They all ask why I decided to go to SI, but I married a Padre, so hopefully we're all good now. After high school, I went on to UC Davis, where I majored in Spanish with a minor in education and continued at USF, where I earned my teaching credential and a master's in teaching. After USF, I taught at OLA and All Souls, and then I came to Sarah. Today, I'm starting my 23rd year. I'd like to take a minute and ask you all a question. How do you, you can hear my children in the background now, so I apologize. Um, you can hear, um, I want to invite you to take a part of a brief activity. Um, so if you can take out your phones and go to www.menti.com, you can use the code 76226898. Once you get there, I want you to enter as many words or phrases that come to mind as you contemplate your son's first days here at Sarah High School. I'll give you a few minutes to log on and to add some phrases. You can enter up to five to 10 phrases. Just take your time and really take a moment to think about how you feel with him starting his first day. As we work through it, you'll see the emotions of different people. There are positive phrases. You'll see them and the, the more people who are feeling it, the, the larger the font gets. We'll give it a few minutes for people to add. So as you notice, there are a number of positive phrases. You see excited, proud, happy. And then there are others that show how anxious and worried we may be, even overwhelmed. There are a range of emotions all at the same time, and there are a number up there that all of us are feeling. The larger the word appears, the more people who have mentioned that they're feeling it. I too share in these emotions. In two weeks, my daughter's starting third grade at a new school. That's the one you hear crying, she just fell. And my son, who just started eighth grade. And although I'm proud and excited for them both, I'm nervous and worried. I just have to trust that their teachers will help them along, just like we do for our boys, your boys, who are now our boys too. This is a new experience for all of you, but we know what to expect. I assure you, we've seen a range of emotions and behaviors from all different types of boys as they make this tri critical transition to high school. That's why we've planned opening week with big brother events, advisories, house activities, and all of these are important in the transition for your sons. Over the course of the school year, you'll be meeting a number of people, but I'd like to take a minute to introduce to you our student life team. Billy Burns is our campus ministry director. Justin Ferdinand is our athletic director. Ray Baldonado, class of 2007, is our dean of students. Mike Langridge, class of 91, is our activities director. Lawrence Long, our tri-school theater company manager. And Nicholas Perizaro, class of 2000, is our wellness counselor and mission and brotherhood coordinator. We will walk with your sons on their high school journey. For this reason, we believe it's critical to help your son build these bonds early on. Students will spend the day with their big brothers and other students from their homeroom. They will learn about their schedule, take a tour of the school, take their yearbook and student ID pictures, and have fun on the field while enjoying games and activities with their fellow Padres. Brotherhood's a hallmark of Sarah, but it does not happen by accident. There will be a series of meetings between the big brothers and their freshmen, to offer support to them throughout the year. They will get to know their classmates, their big brothers, and they'll learn about the four pillars of brotherhood, respect, integrity, inclusion, and compassion. 
Throughout the year, we'll also host a series of Wellness Wednesday activities to support the health and wellness of our students. We will have presentations and different events, including house activities and mission and brotherhood advisories throughout this year. Our intention is to support the social emotional needs of your sons, understanding that the pandemic has affected our students and all of us in ways that we're still learning about. In order to better support our students, we've hired a wellness counselor and mission and brotherhood coordinator. We're so happy to have Mr. Perizaro with us. Not only will he support the health and wellness of our students, he will also be coordinating the mission and brotherhood program in which students attend advisories. The Mission and Brotherhood programming was developed to support our students in their moral decision making, as well as in their journey to become active bystanders. Our curriculum teaches students how to stand up to injustices, as well as creative ways to navigate the difficult years of adolescence. Our students have seen and experienced so much over the past few years. We need to work together to reestablish our new normal, working towards building a stronger, more inclusive community building a brotherhood of respect, integrity, and compassion. Our focus this year is overcoming adversary, adversity. Every Padre has also been placed in a house. Students will receive their house t-shirts at registration. These house groups are made of a cross-section of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Your sons will be allowed to participate in various competitions and team building activities throughout the school year. In an effort to support students in their transition to Sarah, new students are required to join and participate in at least one activity within the first six weeks of school. There will be a club showcase during the first week of classes where students can visit various club meetings and see what actually interests them. There are also various opportunities for students to participate in campus ministry retreats, liturgies, and prayer services. Campus ministry will also help students find opportunities for service throughout the year. Student government elections will take place on September 16th for any freshman who would like to get involved in leadership. On August 26th, which is coming up quickly, we'll host the Frosh Splash. It's an event when Mercy Notre Dame and Sarah freshmen come together for a pool party as a chance to meet and connect as members of Tri School. Whatever club your son wants to join, there will be opportunities for signups in the first few weeks of school, and there will be many more opportunities for your son to get involved throughout the school year and during his time at Sarah. To help the students stay informed of what's going on each week, they will receive a Padre Week Ahead every Monday morning. It will include links, house updates, other news and announcements that support their involvement as students. The Padre Week Ahead will also be located on the website for parent access. As you are aware, the CCS start date was last Friday, August 5th. For any student participating in a fall sport, there's a mandatory parent and student athlete meeting on Wednesday evening, August 10th. This meeting will be held in the auditorium from 6 to 8 p.m. Tri-School Productions, which involves students from Mercy Burlingame and Notre Dame Belmont as well, will be auditioning for the fall play in the first few weeks of school. So make sure your boys listen up for the announcements. In preparation for the school year, we wanna remind you of a few items. Flick is the cafeteria service provider and it will be open daily. Families should be able to create accounts currently. Student ID cards, which are also their cafeteria cards, will be passed out when students take their yearbook photos next Thursday. Therefore, they can use them immediately. Although students are able to eat inside at an appropriate distance, we continue to encourage all eating to be done outdoors. A quick reminder that there will not be cafeteria service on Monday, August 22nd and Tuesday, August 23rd. Therefore, students should plan to bring a bag lunch. Full cafeteria service will begin on Wednesday, August 24th. Sarah's uniquely situated in the middle of a neighborhood. So please remember to be respectful of our neighbors and the traffic regulations. Please do not park in our neighbor's driveways or make U-turns in the middle of the streets. Families must also always use the drop off and pickup locations. Freshmen can be dropped off on 20th Avenue in the white zone or families can also enter through the gate on 20th and drive through campus, turning right on Stratford towards 22nd Avenue. Please remember to always pull up to the start of the line so that we can avoid backups on Stratford and 20th. Please have your students arrive on campus between 7.30 and 8.10. 
Please understand that due to construction, we will also be sending updated information on drop off and pickup procedures and various locations as the construction continues to impact our campus. Throughout the summer, we've continued to work on plans to provide the most safe environment as possible for your sons and our faculty and staff. Although individuals are not currently required to wear masks on campus while indoors, students are welcome to wear them if they choose to do so. We will also continue the additional cleaning routines that we started at the onset of COVID-19. We continue to use air filtration systems in all classrooms. Testing remains cr crucial in maintaining health and safety. Therefore, students are welcome to get tested before school or pick up test kits from the main office as long as they're available. We ask that students test before both orientation on August 18th and again before classes begin on August 22nd. Families can pick up testing kits at the mandatory freshman parent athletics meeting on Wednesday. If your son is not attending the meeting, there will be a drive through pickup on campus this Friday from 9 to 1. For more information, our updated COVID plans can be found on the COVID page of the website. I really look forward to meeting all of you and your sons, and I'm so excited to welcome you to our Padre community. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Dean of Students, Ray Baldonado. Thank you, Mrs. Ortiz, and good evening, everyone. My name is Ray Baldonado. I'm the Dean of Students. The other members of the Dean team are Doug Willett, Ed Berry, James Berry, and Mariano Bermudez. We're excited to get to know you and your sons over the course of the next four years. We are the ones you will see on campus for drop off, pickup, and daily supervisions. We are the ones here to keep your sons safe. It is important that we explain some of our everyday behavior expectations for our students. Padres are men of respect, integrity, inclusion, and compassion, and they're expected to display these qualities at all times, not just while he is in class. Your son will be treated fairly for our behavior and performance measurables set forth in our student parent handbook. You can find the handbook by going to the parent link on our school website. Attendance is mandatory. Make sure that your son is early, prepared, and ready to learn on campus, campus every day. Your son must stay on campus throughout the day until he is done with class. In an effort to build Padre decorum and pride in how a Padre presents himself to the community, our school dress code is in effect anytime your son is attending campus for class. We've received some questions regarding our hair policy. Your son's hair must remain neat and clean while maintaining his natural coloring. Our cell phone policy is our cell phone should be off and put away during school hours. If your son receives a detention, he will be notified via email and he is expected to attend detention with a member of the Dean team on the day in which he receives it. As we enter the school year with all of our boys on campus, please pay special attention to our code of Christian conduct, our use of technology policy, and our, and our policies around impairing and intoxicating substances. Your son's social media footprint counts. The expectation at Sarah is that all students have good manners in person as well as over social media. Our job in the Dean's office is to support your son and hold him to the agreements he signed to be a Padre. We understand that issues will arise. Nowadays, especially involving impairing and intoxicating substances, as well as social media. If your son is experiencing any of these issues, please feel free to contact the Dean's office or your son's guidance counselor in order to seek support. Sarah works in partnership with all of our parents in, in raising men of respect, integrity, inclusion, and compassion. I look forward to meeting you all very soon and in person. Now I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Mike Fideli, best chief advancement officer in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Baldonado. Uh, good evening, everyone. And once again, thank you for being part of our freshman peri parent orientation webinar. My name is Mike Fideli. I'm Sarah's chief advancement officer. It's hard to believe, but this will be the start of my fifth year here at Sarah, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Now, I have the privilege of being a graduate of Sarah, class of 1988, many years ago, but also a current parent of a sophomore in the class of 2025 and an alumni parent with a graduate from the class of 2021. Now, you've heard earlier about the Sarah Parent Partnership, and I'm here to say parents play a pivotal role in the success of our students at Sarah. Your son's experience is tremendously enhanced by your involvement. 
So having your support is critical in our success overall. And as a parent, I can't tell you how many new friends and acquaintances that I've made at Sarah over my years as a parent. It's that involvement that helps build and shape this terrific community. So many of you have already experienced our Padre community through campus visits, the admissions interviews, and other activities such as athletic or performing arts events. And we look forward to welcoming you into this strong and vibrant Sarah community. So the question is, how do you get involved? Now, one of the best ways to get involved is to join the Mothers and Fathers Clubs. This is a great opportunity to meet other Sarah parents, support your sons through various events throughout the school year. Our new club moderators are hard at work on creative ideas for this upcoming school year, including community service opportunities for moms and sons and dads and sons to experience what it's like to work together for the betterment of the community. Now, registration is officially open to join these fantastic clubs, and we encourage all parents and guardians to get involved. Beginning this year, there's no fee to join in an effort to bring all of our parents together. Now, to join, uh, just go to sarahhs.com, and under the Parents tab, scroll down to either the Mother's Club or the Father's Club pages and follow the prompts to register. In addition to your presence and involvement in our Sarah community, we rely on our parent community to enhance the opportunities we provide our pod raise through monetary contributions. Now, every year we ask our parents to make an additional tax deductible contribution to the Padre Fund. Our number one goal is to have 100% participation from all families and no gift is too small. As I like to say, the Padre Fund is the oxygen that allows our school to not only operate, but to thrive. It allows us to enhance our curriculum, as you heard about earlier, attract and retain the finest faculty, and sustain the operation and maintenance of Sarah High School. Now, you'll be receiving a letter from our annual fund director, Lisa Callagy, in the coming weeks with more information about the annual parent gift campaign, along with the Padre Giftionary, which is a practical guide to understanding philanthropy here at Sarah, which will further explain the many fundraising opportunities that parents can be involved with. In fact, mark your calendars for Saturday, March 18th, 2023 for our annual Funded Dream Scholarship Gala. One of our virtues at Sarah is to lead by example. Our boys will be better leaders if they see that we as parents are making an effort to be involved. Thank you for your time tonight. I will now turn it back over to Amy for our Q&A section of the webinar. Thank you, Mike. I would like to thank all of the speakers in tonight's webinar and all the parents for your attention. We hope the material presented to, will help you and your son prepare for the first day at school at Sarah. We would now like to take a few minutes just to answer any additional questions you might have placed in the Q&A bar. And as I look, we don't, let's see, we have a few that have already been answered. I do have a few that I received via email that I'll just ask um, uh, based on earlier communication I sent with this link. Uh, Mary Beth, this one will probably go to you. Um, one of the questions I received are, are there any rules for uh, spectators at athletic events? Yes, I would say the number one rule, I'm not sure if this is COVID related or otherwise, but the number one rule I would say is that we're all there to support our boys and the other teams. So the main issue is to make sure that that we're all cheering, that we're all being respectful and we're all supporting both, both teams. In terms of COVID regulations, no, there aren't any. We just ask that everybody come. If you're not feeling well, you stay home, but we're really excited for another full year of, of athletics and other activities. Great. And I did see in the Q&A box, there was a question about uh, the sports meeting being just for football. And uh, Mary Beth, you did answer it already, um, that it's for everybody uh, hoping to attend, uh, all freshmen hoping to participate in athletics this year. So yes. um, that was a big question that we received a lot of um, what should boys wear for yearbook pictures? Good question. Um, Mr. Baldonado, do you want to answer that? Uh, yes. So for, for, I believe I typed it in the chat, but for the yearbook photos, uh, regular school dress code will be, uh, enforced. There's nothing particular that the boys will have to wear as long as they're in school dress code. 
Great. And um, somebody would like to know where we can see the lunch menu uh, for the cafeteria. That's available um, on the website. If you go to click dining on the right hand side, it'll say like daily menus and you click on that and it will pop up the next couple weeks of meals. I'm not sure if it's populated yet, but I know that Chefalis is working on that right now. Great. And lockers, this seems to be a question a lot of people are asking. Are lockers available to our students? Would that be, a, oh, sorry. Hug you, uh, Coach Baldonado and I, or I can answer that. But um, as of right now, we are not um, passing out academic lockers, but there are lockers for students that are participating in a sport at that time um, because of the extra gear associated with that. Okay, and an academic um, scheduling question. Um, somebody asked uh, Mrs. Lee or Mr. Fulton Peebles, uh, who would be the best to reach out to regarding changes that need to be made to a class schedule? That would be me. So if you have any changes that you'd like to, for an elective choice, for example, uh, then feel free to email me. Great, thank you. And I see another question, and we've received a few about supply lists. Um, the usually, typically, the students uh, receive the supply list from the teachers once they attend class. So um, there will be more information on that once they they actually attend classes. Is that right, um, Mr. Fulton Peoples? Yes. Yes, that's right. Everyone should have received an email, and it highlights very very clearly uh, when you can expect to see or receive uh, class lists. Um, books how to order books refer to that email if you have any issues with book ordering make sure you email the librarian uh, patrick vias kelly the link to his email address is in that email about scheduling that has been sent to you today approximately at three o'clock wonderful thank you and i i remember in in webinars from the past and just being a, when I was a freshman mom myself, um, can somebody or Mrs. Lee or uh, Fulton Peebles, can you just um, tell us the audience the difference between an honors course and a, and a college prep course? Can you just briefly discuss the system? Um, yes, I can answer that. So an honors course is a more accelerated course that goes into more depth um, with more critical thinking and more analysis. Um, so there is more homework associated with the course. I would say on average that um, an honors course has somewhere between 30 to 45 minutes of homework a day. A college prep course probably has about 20 to 30 minutes of homework um, each period, I should say, not each day, but each period. Great, thank you. And um, I have a couple questions, just one um, with regard to if registration day on the 18th is missed, um, how do we pick up the student uh, the student ID card? And um, I might just compound that question with, um, what if a student loses their card? Because that seems to happen sometimes too. Mary Beth, can you answer that please? Sure, um, on Thursday, right after they take pictures, they'll get their ID card. If they were to lose that at any time, they'd go to the main office. Um, and request another one. And Mr. Morris will actually create a new one for them. I think it's like three or $4 to get a new card. Um, if you are not there on Wednesday, I mean on Thursday, excuse me, um, students can pick up their card. They'll get one in homeroom, but it won't have their picture until they've done their picture retakes. And at that time they'd need to get an ID card with their picture. Great, thank you. And I, I see a question, what are fall sports? Fall sports at Sarah are football, cross country and water polo. And uh, another question in the chat is, um, what if somebody cannot attend the, uh, what if a parent can't attend the meeting on Wednesday, uh, August 10th at six? Um, will there be any further information for parents that can't attend, Mary Beth? Yes, you can reach out to Mr. Ferdinand directly, but I believe they're uh, taping, they're videoing the the evening as well. So you'd be able to get that information. But I know that it's an opportunity. Uh, many of the coaches will be there and things like that. Um, so it's really a good event. And then we have PCA coming, that's Positive Coaches Alliance, who works with the student athletes um, who are interested in getting involved. So it's really a good, good night. And it really sets expectations for the years and helps parents and students understand um, the commitment. Ms. Ortiz, really quickly, I, I see that a number of individuals have asked about whether or not that night is just for fall sports or all year. I think that 
question may have been answered, but it might be good to emphasize. It's my understanding that it's all years. I've just reached out to Mr. Ferdinand again to make sure, but it's my understanding that it's any student, it's the mandatory Frosh athlete parent orientation night for every single sport for the whole year. Gotcha. So you. whether you're playing baseball in the spring, basketball in the winter, yes, your you and your son should attend. And if there's an issue, you should reach out to Mr. Ferdinand. Great, and we have a we have one question regarding independent study. First is, um, does my son need to check in anywhere for independent study? Is is one question, and another question is, um, what time does zero period start? Those kind of go together. So or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Is independent study considered zero period? I'm sorry, I, I read the question wrong. My my apologies. So zero period is from 7.15 to 8.10 a.m. It is actually before first period. We only have one zero period class for freshmen and that is jazz ensemble. So if your son is not in jazz ensemble, then he does not have a zero period class. And so the first period of the day starts at 8.15 a.m. Independent study is not considered zero period. It is a period within the day. Um, so it could be first period, it could be fifth period, it could be seventh period, it could be fourth period, it just depends on your students' schedule. So I would look in PCR to see your students' schedule. They were sent out earlier today. So the time periods um, are there as well as the period of the day. And there is no check-in for independent study. Um, students are allowed to go to the cafeteria for independent study where they can do homework, get something to eat, hang out with their friends. Um, that is where they go for independent study this year. Thank you. And uh, this question would be for Mr. Fideli. Um, for parents clubs, what kind of involvement and time commitment do, do the parents clubs take? Sure. Great question. Um, usually parents clubs meet once a month uh, individually as a mother's club and a father's club. We do have a number of events throughout the year where they, they meet together. They'll hold a, a holiday event in December. We do an end of the year event um, in June. Um, but then there's other opportunities, volunteer opportunities that take place um, throughout the year where at the first parent club meetings, there'll be volunteer sign up sheets to work snack bar and, and work for funded dream and do different things and volunteer uh, opportunities will be existing there. So really once a month, um, as far as meetings go, and then depending on the amount of volunteer time that people want to participate in, it could vary. It could be some weekends. It could be uh, other times throughout the year as well. Great. Thank you for that. Um, here's a question regarding community service. Um, um, one of our attendees is wondering if it's the honor system or how they uh, track the hours. And um, could somebody please explain the system through campus ministry, Mary Beth? Sure. So for the hours, students will need to sign up uh, through X2Ball to track their hours. And when that happens, students enter uh, different information about the, the group that they worked with and their email address. And we actually reach out to all of the uh, service organizations so that we can make sure that um, the student was there, did it, and um, that's all kind of reconciled through campus ministry. Great, thank you. And um, Mr. Baldonado, um, a question regarding dress code. Um, does Sarah still allow t-shirts um, and are these shirts for purchase on campus anywhere or only online? Uh, we do allow t-shirts as long as they are Sarah themed t-shirts. So he has like a Sarah football shirt or a class of 2026 shirt. Yes, those are allowed. Um, as far as I know right now, they are only available online. Great, thank you. And um, I do see the last question. I think there's been um, two questions just regarding um, the meeting on the 10th. And again, that's the uh, freshman participation athletics meeting for all sports. Just to, um, and it's on Wednesday um, from 6 to 8 p.m. on campus here for freshmen. All right, I guess I'm gonna look for one more question. Uh, transportation, is um, their transportation being provided uh, by Sarah? I know there was a survey that went out recently, so there are a few questions regarding, um, regarding transportation. Mary Beth, do you have an answer for that? I, I know that we will share information regarding carpools um, if you have not received that, I can send that out to people 
again. Um, and I can, I'm happy to check in with, um, Dr. Thornton, did you have any more information on transportation? Yeah, one more, one piece to add to it is um, uh, in the last couple of years during COVID, we, we uh, stopped a lot of those buses because of uh, uh, the problems we're having in, in small groups. So we're looking at actually surveying and doing an evaluation right now to see w w what's the best location to restart. Uh, we're not sure exactly when we're gonna restart that. That's a work in progress. But as Ms. Ortiz said, uh, we're going to start with uh, surveying for carpools to be able to connect people, whether or not you're from the Half Moon Bay area or down south in, in Palo Alto, even some people in the East Bay and in San Francisco to make sure you can connect and be able to support one another in transportation. And then we'll communicate out during the year uh, if and when we start it. Great, thank you very much for that, Dr. Thornton. Well, we are nearing the end of our webinar, so I would like to thank you all for your time. We are excited to see, let's see, we are excited to see you and your families this sat on Saturday, August 20th at 9.30 for our welcome prayer service and reception. Right now, I'd just like to throw it back to Barry for one more last goodbye, but again, thank you so much. We're so excited to see this new freshman class and meet all you wonderful parents and guardians. So, so thank you, Amy. And again, I want to thank everybody who, who attended this webinar. I saw that we had over 230 people on the webinar. I counted there's over 87 or almost 90 questions. They came fast and furious. And a lot of them, no surprise, are really focused on some of the practical things, the sure, the drop-offs and so on. Know that we'll be communicating with you on a regular basis during the year. Every Wednesday, we send out a, a, a communique parking and drop off that kind of stuff you were asking about that's going to be sent out on, on a regular basis so we will walk with you every step of the way and make sure that you're supported in this, this incredible transition Mo most importantly uh we really pride ourselves on what it means to be in a partnership with the parents in, in, a, in a catholic school understanding the, the parent is the primary educator of their child and we walk with you we support you and we have an understanding of education as a journey. We talk about we our community supports these young men on the journey to becoming men of faith, wisdom, service, community, and leadership. Your, your sons have already started that journey. They've already started the journey as they've joined us. And, and it's really exciting for us. It's a wonderful, wonderful time. We look forward to them coming. We look forward to partnering with you. We look forward to getting to know each one of you uh, as we all come on campus in the next couple of weeks. So thank you again so much for being here. Uh, and we will remember, as, as uh, Amy said, we will post this and we will follow up answering questions that did not get answered this evening. Again, thank you.